the experiment aims to investigate the exploding mass defect hypothesis by detecting shock waves generated during the spontaneous fission of Californium-252, CF2-SHU-52. This is accomplished using a Mach Zender interferometer enhanced with multiple beam paths and phase-sensitive detection, alongside ultra-sensitive acoustic detection methods. To begin, a sample of CF-252 is carefully prepared. This isotope is known for its ability to undergo spontaneous fission, emitting neutrons and fission fragments. The sample is securely encapsulated within a double-walled containment vessel to ensure safety and prevent any contamination. The vessel complies with all regulatory standards for handling radioactive materials. The medium chosen for the experiment is optically pure heavy water, or deuterium oxide, D2O. Heavy water is selected because it has reduced neutron absorption compared to regular water, which minimizes background noise from neutron interactions. It also possesses excellent optical properties, making it ideal for interferometry. The heavy water is meticulously purified to remove any impurities that could affect optical clarity. The core of the experimental setup is the Mach Zander interferometer. A single frequency, highly stable laser, such as an NDAG laser uh, operating at 1064 nanometers, serves as the light source. The laser beam is split into two arms, a reference arm and a sample arm. In the sample arm, Mirrors are arranged to direct the laser beam through the heavy water medium multiple times. This configuration amplifies the sensitivity of the interferometer by increasing the interaction length within the medium. Phase-sensitive detection is implemented by introducing modulators that apply a known phase shift to the laser beam. This allows for the detection of minute changes in the refractive index of the medium. Which, which would manifest as shifts in the interference pattern when the beams from the two arms are recombined. High-speed, low-noise photodetectors capture these changes, and the signals are processed using advanced data acquisition systems capable of real-time analysis. Complementing the interferometry is the ultra-sensitive acoustic detection system. An array of hydrophones, which are specialized underwater microphones, is str str strategically placed around the CF-252 source within the heavy water. These hydrophones are designed to detect low-amplitude pressure variations that could indicate the presence of shock waves. They are connected to low-noise preamplifiers and digital signal processors that filter and analyze the acoustic signals. To ensure the accuracy and reliability of the experiment, environmental control systems are employed. The interferometer is placed on a vibration isolation table within a temperature-controlled room to minimize external disturbances. The entire setup is enclosed to prevent air currents and dust from affecting the measurements. Sensitive electronic equipment is housed within shielded enclosures to protect against electromagnetic interference. Prior to data collection, calibration procedures are carried out. The interferometer is calibrated by establishing a baseline interference pattern without the CF252 source and introducing known refractive index changes using temperature modulation. The acoustic system is calibrated using a standard acoustic source to generate known pressure waves, verifying the sensitivity and frequency response of the hydrophones. Synchronization between the optical and acoustic systems is confirmed to ensure that data from both can be accurately correlated. Once the experiment is set up and calibrated, data collection begins with simultaneous recording from both the interferometry and acoustic systems. The experiment runs continuously over an extended period to capture a statistically significant number of fission events. During the observation period, the interferometer detects transient phase shifts in the interference pattern that may indicate changes in the refractive index of the heavy water. At the same time, the hydrophones monitor for acoustic signals that correspond to pressure waves propagating through the medium. Precise timestamps are recorded for all detected events to facilitate cross-correlation between the two datasets. Data analysis involves processing the signals from both systems to filter out background noise and enhance the detection of potential events. For the interferometry data, algorithms calculate the magnitude of any phase shifts while the acoustic data is analyzed for amplitude, frequency, and waveform characteristics of the detected pressure waves. Events detected by both systems are correlated temporally to assess whether they are related. 
the results are then compared with predictions from conventional nuclear models and the exploding mass defect hypothesis. Standard models of nuclear fission are used to predict expected signals, serving as a baseline for comparison. Any observed anomalies or discrepancies that cannot be explained by conventional theories are scrutinized to determine if they align with the hypothesized shock waves resulting from the explosive transformation of the mass defect. Quality assurance is ensured by keeping detailed records of all procedures, calibrations, and observations. The experimental design and data analysis methods are reviewed by independent experts to validate the approach and findings. In the event of unexpected results or equipment failures, contingency plans are in place to address and rectify issues promptly. The ultimate goal of the experiment is to provide clear evidence either supporting or refuting the exploding mass defect hypothesis. By employing advanced detection methods and meticulously controlling experimental conditions, the research seeks to uncover potential new insights into the fundamental processes of nuclear reactions and energy release. This experimental approach represents a novel intersection of optical and acoustic detection techniques in the field of nuclear physics. Positive results could have significant implications for our understanding of energy transformation at the nuclear level, potentially leading to advancements in energy generation technologies and theoretical physics. Regardless of the outcome, the experiment contributes valuable data and fosters a deeper exploration of the phenomena associated with nuclear fission.